Welcome back, history enthusiasts, to the second installment of Roman Military Genius. Today, we journey deeper into the ranks, revealing generals 11 through 20. These figures may be lesser known, but their impact on the Roman Empire and military strategy is unquestionable. Galerius Valerius Maximianus, commonly known as Galerius, was a Roman emperor who reigned during the Tetrarchy. We will explore his military feats, particularly his campaigns against the Persians and his role in the Balkans. Galerius first gained recognition for his military prowess in the Balkans, where he played a key role in quelling internal dissent and rebellions. However, it was his ambitious campaign against the Persian Empire that truly defined his military career. Initially, the campaign was fraught with setbacks, the Romans suffered a humiliating defeat at the Battle of Cary. But Galerius, far from being discouraged, meticulously planned a counteroffensive. Learning from previous mistakes, he changed tactics and managed to catch the Persian forces off guard, winning a decisive victory at the Battle of Satala and securing a favorable peace treaty. This achievement cemented his reputation as a military tactician and contributed significantly to the stability of the Eastern Roman frontier. Gaius Suetonius Paulinus was a Roman general whose career was marked by both triumph and tragedy. We will delve into his military campaigns, most notably his victory in Wales and the devastating loss against Boudicca's rebellion. Paulinus first gained fame through his campaign in North Africa, but it was his role in Britain that truly tested his mettle. Tasked with subduing Wales, he targeted the Druidic stronghold on the Isle of Anglesey, a significant spiritual and political center. Employing a formidable combination of military engineering and strategy, he managed to construct a makeshift bridge to the island, leading his troops to victory and dismantling the Druidic power base but Paulinus' successes were soon overshadowed. While he was in Wales, Boudicca led her Iceni tribe in a revolt that resulted in the destruction of several Roman settlements, including London. Paulinus rushed his troops back but couldn't prevent a disastrous defeat at the Battle of Watling Street, though he eventually managed to suppress the rebellion. His career never fully recovered, but his actions left an indelible imprint on the Roman occupation of Britain. Aulus Plautius was the Roman general responsible for the invasion and initial subjugation of Britain. We will explore the brilliant tactics and challenges he overcame to achieve this monumental feat. When Emperor Claudius set his sights on Britain, it was Aulus Plautius who was charged with the daring task of conquering the mysterious isle. Setting sail with four legions, Plautius had to first quell a mutiny among his troops, reluctant to go to the end of the world. Upon reaching Britain, he faced a coalition of native tribes who were not about to surrender their lands easily. But with meticulous planning, he managed to outmaneuver the Britons in a series of confrontations, leading to the decisive Battle of the Medway. It was here that he showcased his tactical genius by successfully crossing the river and flanking the British forces, resulting in a decisive Roman victory. His accomplishments laid the foundation for Roman rule in Britain, expanding the empire's reach and demonstrating the invincible aura of Roman military might. Lucius Flavius Silva was a Roman military officer most famous for his siege of Masada, a fortress in ancient Judea. We will delve into the calculated strategies and fierce determination that led him to victory. Assigned the arduous task of capturing Masada, Silva faced seemingly insurmountable challenges. The fortress, situated atop a plateau, had defensible high walls and was heavily fortified by Jewish zealots. Many had thought it impossible to breach. Undeterred, Silva employed brilliant engineering tactics, constructing a circumvallation wall to cut off supplies and a massive siege ramp for his troops to ascend. For months, both Romans and Jews displayed unparalleled tenacity, but Silva's relentless siege tactics finally bore fruit. After battering rams weakened the fortress walls, his men flooded into Masada, only to find that most defenders had chosen suicide over capture. 
This grim victory left an indelible mark on history, displaying both the unyielding spirit of the besieged and the relentless efficacy of Roman siege warfare under Silva's command. Titus Caesar Vespasianus, commonly known as Titus, was the eldest son of Emperor Vespasian and himself became the Roman Emperor from 79 to 81 AD. We will focus on the military achievements that etched his name into the annals of history. Before ascending to the throne, Titus served under his father in Judea, where he gained renown for his role in the Siege of Jerusalem. The ruthless campaign culminated in the destruction of the city and its revered Second Temple, forever changing the course of Jewish history. Titus demonstrated a fierce competence in tactical warfare, as well as a brutal efficiency that struck terror into the hearts of his enemies. Upon his father's death, Titus inherited an empire stabilized by Vespasian's policies and military successes. During his short reign, Titus dealt with the eruption of Mount Vesuvius and a fire in Rome, but it was his prior military exploits that defined his legacy. The Arch of Titus, erected in Rome after his death, commemorates his victory in Jerusalem, forever memorializing the military prowess that stood as a testament to his name. Titus Flavius Vespasianus, commonly known as Vespasian, was a Roman emperor who reigned from 69 to 79 AD. We will delve into the military exploits that catapulted him from general to the throne of an empire. Before his ascent to the imperial office, Vespasian was a general under Emperor Nero, tasked with quelling the Jewish rebellion in Judea. The siege of Jerusalem was the highlight of this campaign, a brutal affair that culminated in the capture of the city and the destruction of the Second Temple, an event that would reverberate through history. But it was his role in the year of the four emperors that truly marked him as a military genius. The Roman Empire was in chaos, and Vespasian skillfully navigated the turbulent waters, ultimately defeating his rivals to claim the throne. During his reign, he undertook the construction of the Colosseum, funded by the spoils of his Judean campaign, further solidifying his military and now architectural legacy. While his rule was relatively short, the impact of his military campaigns was lasting, setting the stage for his sons Titus and Domitian to take the helm. Thus, Vespasian proved that military prowess could not only win battles but could build and sustain an empire. Tiberius Claudius Pompeianus was a Roman general and politician who rose to prominence during the 2nd century AD. We will recount some of his most notable military achievements that earned him lasting respect within the Roman Empire. A close ally of Emperor Marcus Aurelius, Pompeianus was instrumental during the Marcomannic Wars, fighting against Germanic tribes that threatened Rome's borders. His tactical brilliance shone at the Battle of Aquileia, where he commanded the legions that ultimately broke the siege, pushing the Germanic tribes back and stabilizing the region. But it wasn't just his skill on the battlefield that earned him accolades, his diplomacy was equally crucial. When Marcus Aurelius died, Pompeianus was offered the throne but declined, pledging allegiance to Commodus, Aurelius' son, in a move that temporarily stabilized the empire's political situation. As a result of his loyal service, Pompeianus was made consul three times, a rare honor demonstrating the Senate's respect for him. Yet, despite the temptation of power and the respect he garnered, Pompeianus remained a general first, maintaining his reputation as one of Rome's most competent military leaders during a turbulent time. Marcus Aurelius Carus was a Roman emperor known for his military campaigns more than for his governance. We will focus on his rapid victories that expanded the Roman Empire to its most extensive borders. Assuming the role of emperor in 283 AD, Carus wasted no time launching an aggressive campaign against Rome's eastern enemies. His soldiers were imbued with an almost fanatical loyalty, perhaps stirred by Carus's own mystique, as a man said to have been struck by lightning without harm. He took his legions through Asia Minor, marching quickly and decisively, leaving a trail of conquered cities in his wake. In 283 AD, he achieved a significant victory over the Sasanian Empire in Mesopotamia, 
capturing the key city of Ctesiphon. As a result, the Roman Empire extended its territories further east than ever before. However, his reign and life would be cut short under mysterious circumstances, possibly assassinated, during the same campaign. The brevity of his rule belies the impact of his military expeditions, leaving us to wonder what might have been had he lived longer. Germanicus Julius Caesar was not just a beloved general of Rome, he was also its hope for a stable future. We will delve into his campaigns in Germania, which showcased his military prowess and charismatic leadership. Dispatched to avenge the catastrophic loss at the Teutoburg Forest, where three Roman legions were annihilated, Germanicus was given a challenging task. He wasted no time, leading his men beyond the Rhine and conducting a series of campaigns that were as much about recovering Roman dignity as they were about territorial gains. His troops ravaged the lands of the Germanic tribes and recovered two of the three lost legionary eagles, symbols of Roman honor and strength. In 16 AD, Germanicus won a significant battle near the Weser River, further solidifying his reputation. Yet, his success made him a political threat in the eyes of Emperor Tiberius, who recalled him to Rome, ostensibly in triumph but shadowed by suspicion. The mystery surrounding his untimely death in Antioch only intensified the enigma of a life that, in other circumstances, might have been among Rome's greatest. Nero Claudius Drusus Germanicus, also known simply as Drusus, was a Roman military commander with extraordinary ambitions. We will focus on his sweeping campaigns in Germania, showcasing the audacity and skill that marked his military career. Fresh from the successes in the Alpine region, Drusus set his sights on the untamed lands of Germania. Launching his first campaign in 12 BCE, he crossed the Rhine with an audacious goal to bring the Germanic tribes under Roman rule. The speed and ferocity of his advances took the tribes by surprise, allowing Roman legions to establish forts deep into Germanic territory. But conquering was one thing, holding the territory proved a significant challenge. Drusus was known for building infrastructure, including a canal between the Rhine and the Issel, not only to move supplies but also to lay the foundation for Roman civilization in these new lands. Unfortunately, his untimely death in 9 BCE, likely due to a fall from his horse, cut short a promising career. Had he lived longer, who knows how the map of the Roman Empire might have looked. Drusus left an indelible mark on Roman military history, earning the respect of both his allies and adversaries. And there we have them, the next ten Roman Empire generals whose strategies, conquests, and legacies are equally monumental. They too have etched their names in the books of military lore, proving that brilliance knows no rank. If you've been enthralled by these overlooked yet pivotal figures, don't forget to like this video, share your insights in the comments, and of course, hit the subscribe button for more compelling journeys through history.